The New Estate Baptist Church Media presents The Living Word of God We believe the message you're about to listen to Will touch your spirit and soul Have a life-changing fellowship with the Lord Through the power of His Word May His glory shine through you forever there for us and for 31 million five hundred and thirty six thousand seconds the Lord has not failed the oxygen you are breathing in every second has not ceased our God is forever faithful is forever consistent there is no one we can compare unto him. Please, can we just rise and shout a big hallelujah unto him? You can do better than that. Listen, this year, 2017, didn't see your end. You are the one seeing the end of it. I want your hallelujah to be a victorious one. Oh, yeah, let's shout hallelujah! A bigger hallelujah! All right, for that reason, the choir will be leading us to celebrate God to dance. You are free to dance with us. It's just simple, simple songs we are putting together to dance to our Maker who has continued to be faithful. Come on, 
come on We thank you Lord
celebrate the choir. Let's celebrate the choir. Put those hands together. Let's celebrate the choir. That was a good illustration. Very good way to end up the year. That's just a tip of the iceberg. This evening, I'd like you to just come. Nine o'clock this evening, you will sing and you will dance. Until you don't want to sing, until you don't want to dance. There's no better way to cross into a new year than to cross on the wings of praise. Amen. I'd like, to look forward to, like you to look forward to that time. And please be here by 9 o'clock this evening when we shall be singing to cross over into another year. Praise God. We want to give thanks to God for giving us the grace to be part of the completion of year 2017. It's a big, big, big privilege knowing well that even this morning some people did not wake up. But you woke up, you dressed up, you came up. We want to give glory to God. We want to give glory to God. This is the doing of the Lord and it is wonderful in our eyes. Only the living can praise God. So if you are living, can you just praise him with a clap offering? Let us pray together. Eternal Father, we give you thanks for yet another opportunity that we have to bask in your presence, to worship you, to honor you, to adore you, and to praise you. How we do pray, eternal God, that you will meet with us in the brevity of this time that we have for sharing your word, in order that we might receive the breath of your life that makes all the difference. We ask, O oh, eternal God, that the word will make a new thing happen for us, even as we prepare to enter into a new year. Thank you, eternal Father. I pray for myself, Lord, that your hand will be upon me as I share your word on this pulpit again. I do not take it for granted. And every time I come up here, I trust you for grace. I ask, oh God, that you make it available even this, this morning, that your people might be blessed. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. We are reading Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Begin reading from verse 46 and stopping at verse 52. Mark chapter 10 from verse 46 stopping at verse 52. Are you there? Is everybody there? Can we stand together as we read the word of God together? Please. Mark chapter 10. We honor God as we read his word this morning. And they came to Jericho and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still, commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, said unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go thy way, and faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Amen. You may be seated. Help me tell your neighbor there, prepare for a new beginning. Help me tell your neighbor again, prepare for a new beginning. Amen. Amen. 
every time we are approaching a new year like this, our hearts are usually filled with desires, aspirations, and plans for the new year. We have several things that we want God to do for us in the new year. These form prayer requests which we begin to table before the Lord ahead of the new year. I'm sure if I ask any one of you here, you will bear witness with me that before today, you have been putting before the Lord some things that you are trusting God to see happen with you and for you in the new year. Every time the mention of 2018 is made, some things begin to jump in your heart, some thoughts, some ideas begin to fly in your mind about what you will look forward to happening in your life. In other words, you do not expect to be on the same spot in 2018 as you have been in 2017. Amen? And that, that is exactly what we turn to prayer requests and we bring them before the Lord. Some want a change of status from single to married. Is there a witness in the house? Yes. Some want to go back to school for another qualification. Some look forward to occupying a new and bigger office in their places of work. Some wish to begin a new business. Or some want to take their businesses to a new level. Amen. Some trust God for a baby or a child in their marriage. And some are believing God for a new baby. In other words, they already have a baby or children, but they are believing God for yet another one. Either the second or the third, or even the fourth, fifth, or sixth, seventh, or eighth, ninth, or tenth. Some others pray to have a new start in their spiritual journeys. These and many more usually form the meditation of the hearts of God's own people as they look forward to entering into a new year. While these plans and aspirations and desires are good, it is necessary that certain things be done to adequately prepare for the new things that we are looking forward to happening for us in the new year. Nothing that you desire or plan for should take you unawares. This is the main thrust of this message. God is calling us, all of us, that we should look that as we look forward to the things we want him to do and he wants to do in our lives he wants us to prepare ahead of the year 2018 we have responsibility to prepare adequately in order to receive those things that god wants us to be blessed with in the course of this year the passage we have just read gives us the story of a man whose name was Bartimaeus. time will not allow me to do some uh, breaking down of a few things in that scripture. But I'd like to take you to the fact, to some facts that I'd like you to bear in mind as far as that uh, man was concerned. First and foremost, the Bible says that, that he, was, he was in Jericho. Jesus was passing by heading on to Jerusalem for the Passover and he passed through of necessity through Jericho. And Jericho was known to be a very popular city, a passageway for pilgrims when they are going to Jerusalem for the festivals that, you know, are held every year in Jerusalem. So Jesus was passing that way. And that day uh, that he was passing, Bartimaeus was on the regular spot where people knew him. He sat down there to beg for arms. Why was he begging for arms? Bartimaeus had a handicap. In those days, in the Hebrew society, most of their jobs demanded the use of practical or physical energy. They were doing more physical strenuous jobs than mental things. And to that extent, if anybody had a handicap, either of the legs or of the hands or of the eyes, it was a major problem because the person would not be able to do the things that he should do to get for himself a daily bread. In the, call, in the case of Bartimaeus, he didn't have he didn't have eyes. In other words, he was blind. And because he was blind, certainly, you know, that was a major limitation. He wouldn't be able to do the things that he would like to do to get an income for himself. Bartimaeus did not beg because he loves to beg. He begged because it was expedient on him to beg to sustain himself. That was not what he wanted. Would somebody say, Pastor, how did you know? I know this very well from the scripture. 
because when he had opportunity to change his status, he did not joke with it. He took it very, very seriously. I can imagine that he had gone everywhere, did not done everything that he knew how to do. His parents, friends, and those who loved him must have done everything they knew how to do to get him out of that predicament, but he could not get out of it. And no wonder, the day he had opportunity uh, to change that situation, he was very, very desperate about it. He was very, very serious about it. He did not joke at all. Amen? And that is exactly what uh, we, I mean, some of, one thing I would like you to know about uh, Bartimius, that he was a very, very serious uh, 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 prayer. When he prayed unto Jesus, asking for a change of status, asking for something from Jesus, he was very, very serious about it. Amen. On hearing that Jesus was uh, of Nazareth was passing by, he began to call on the name of Jesus with a loud voice and said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This is an expression of faith in the fact that he knew that Jesus was the Messiah and that Jesus was capable and able to change his situation. He was able to heal him. You know, that, that is to say that first thing that, was in, that we want to take note of off is that Bartimaeus was a man who had faith in the person of Jesus as the Messiah. He believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And as the Messiah, he had solution, not only for human predicaments, but he also had solution for the soul of men. That's why that faith made him to call on the name of Jesus. And I heard scripture say, as many as call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Salvation is not only salvation of the, of the soul, but they can be saved from their predicaments. They can be saved from their troubles. They can be saved from their pains. They can be saved from their hardship. They can be saved from everything that troubles them. That's why Jesus will say, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. I came with authority. I came with enough power to destroy everything that Satan may have been doing in your life and harassment you have suffered. I came to save you. To save you from problems of this life and to save you from condemnation to hell. I am the Savior. Scripture says that when the angel announced to his mother, he said, his name shall be called Jesus for he shall save his own people from their sins. So Jesus is a Savior. He's not only a Savior of men from their, from their sins, he also saves them from troubles and difficulties. Amen? And that is what Bartimaeus believed. So, if anybody is going to receive anything from God, the person first of all has to learn to believe God. And I saw it in scripture that whoever must come to the Lord must believe that he is and he is the rewarder of them that diligently will seek him. So, faith is very critical or faith was critical for Bartimaeus and he had faith in Jesus Christ and his ability to do what he wanted him to do for him. What did he do next? Second thing I want you to note that apart from his having faith, he cried out desperately and persistently to Jesus, which was an expression of seriousness in wanting a new experience. Bartimaeus was looking forward to a new experience. I've been in this blind spot for too long. I've been in this beggarly situation for too long. I've been in this stranded situation for, this, for too long. People have known me with this kind of a, a, a life for, for too long. I've been in this valley for too long. I've wept for too long. Tears have been upon my eyes for too long. Calamity has followed me for too long. Problems have followed me for too long. I've carried the baggage of sin for too long. And therefore, there was a desperation in the mind or in the heart of this man. He said, I want a new experience. The experience I've had was a, has been a terrible one. Everybody comes and goes and they enter into the temple I can't enter. They enter into their homes freely I cannot do, do so. They can change their dresses by themselves I can't do it. They can wash their clothes by themselves I can't do it. I do not know the difference between blue and black. I don't know the difference between yellow and green because I cannot see. I've been in this situation. 
situation for too long. That experience, I hate it. I've been in this poverty for too long. People have made me a laughing stock. People throw things at me. They give me only what is what they don't need. They throw you know little monies that won't make a difference in their own lives. They just throw them at me. Some of them can't even have the courtesy to give me these things by the hand. They throw, uh, throw them at me. It's a bad experience. I don't want it. And I want a brand new one. I need a change of experience. That was what the cry of Bartimaeus was. And because of that, he was desperate to have a new change, to a, a new beginning. He was desperate for a new experience. He was desperate to have something new happen to him so that he can change his pedestal and operate on a new realm. That was the, the desire of Bartimaeus. No wonder he was very serious about it. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to say here to you that like Bartimaeus, he who must come to God must be very, very serious. We must take our faith with God very seriously. We must take our work with God very seriously. Is it a matter of life and death? Yes, it's a matter of life and death. Because Jesus says, I put before you life and death. So you just have to choose one. It's a serious matter. If you anybody is praying, he must pray seriously. Bible says, if you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me diligently with all your heart. So it calls on you, if you want a new beginning, if you don't want to continue the way you've been going in 2017, if you don't want to continue the way you've been going from the day you were born to this year, if you don't want to continue in that abject poverty, you don't want to continue in that beggarly situation, you don't want to continue the way you have been going for people to throw things at you, if you don't want to continue the way people have been making ridicule of you and calling you all kinds of names, you don't want to continue that way, if you, are, if you don't want it, then you just have to do something about it and if you are going to do something about it it has to be what serious you have to be diligent about your search for a new beginning if a new beginning will give you a new song then go for it and go for it with all your heart amen in the book of Deuteronomy the Bible says there he says thou shall serve the Lord with all thy heart with all thy might with all thy strength in other words serving God for a man who wants a change of status serving God has to be a thing that consumes the whole of you that man screamed he cried out with a mighty voice such that even when people heard him, they turned around, they rebuked him. But rather than keep quiet because the matter was serious, he, the Bible says he shouted all the more. If I'm insulting anybody, let everybody get insulted today. If anybody is going to damn me, let them damn me today. After all, they've damned me for many years. I don't care again whatever you do, but I'm going to cry until he hears me. Because I know that only him, when he hears me, things will change for me. All of you have heard me. I've cried to you. I've come to you. I've begged you. I have sought from you. You did nothing about my situation. The best that you have done has not given me my eyes. This is the only one man that can give me the new beginning. Therefore, if you like, cry. If you like, don't but if you like bother i'm not going to be civil about this matter anymore there's too much at stake for me to sit here and allow you to intimidate me the bible says he shouted all the more all the more because he wanted something new brothers and sisters every time i come to the last day of the year like this I just look at the life of believers and I'm asking, God, is this all? I'm asking every day, is God, is he all? Is this how we are just going to be grinding, going through routine, the same experience, year in and year out and year in and year out? Is there, is there nothing more? But I know that in God there must be something more. I just know with the knowing of my heart that there is something more. Why are we going through the same circle year after year? Believers have almost taken it that it's okay to go the way they are going. They even console themselves to say, I'm trying. The moment you say, I'm trying, you won't get to be desperate. You won't get to be serious the way Bartimaeus was serious. And therefore, Bartimaeus is a noted person when he comes to seeking a new beginning for his life. I know that something bigger is in 2018. 
I know that something greater is in 2018. I know God has greater plans in 2018. I heard him say to Jeremiah in those days, he said, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. They are thoughts of good and not of evil. I want to give you a great future. And the future begins with 2018 for everyone seated here. Whatever God says is in the future. It begins in your 2018. And therefore, whatever God has loaded the year with, you can't sit here and say, Ki sera, sera, what will be, will be. No, you will have to say, God, because this is in your plan for me, I want it. Jesus taught us to pray. He said, when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. He said, but thy will be done in my life as it is in heaven. That means I won't settle for any less than the will of God being executed in my life. Everything that heaven loaded in 2018, God, the last day of 2018 will never come to pass until all of them have fallen in my hands and I can test fight to them because you are a faithful God. Whatever you say you will do, you will do. Therefore, I key unto you and I hold on to you. I will not let you go until you bless me. Is there a desperate person in that in this place? You've been doing your business the same way. That's why your business is going the same way. Somebody said if you just don't if you do the same thing and expect a different result, it's fraudulent. If you want anything different, you must do what? You must do something different. They saw Bartimaeus in a different light on that day. They never thought that a, a blind beggar could be aggressive. They never thought a blind beggar would disobey authorities that were shutting him down. They never thought a blind beggar will damn the people who were used to giving him money and not thinking, if I disobey them, what of this thing, if this thing doesn't work and I have to continue in this my begging, who will give me money when I have shouted on them, I have disobeyed them? He damns the consequence. I heard Esther say, go pray for me. If I perish, I perish. Your Christian faith has to come to that point where you are saying to yourself, if I perish, I perish. If brother so and so is no more going to help me, let him not help me. If this organization is not going to give me anything anymore, let them not give me. If this company is not going to look at me anymore, let them not look at me. Because I know one thing, that from where shall my help come? My help shall not come from a man. My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. And the whole earth may hate me, but he doesn't hate me. He loves me to the point that he can lay down his own son and crucify him and look away from him for a moment that he was bearing my own sin if he loved him that much scripture says if he gave unto us jesus christ how would he not along with jesus give us all other things therefore a bold christian can look the situation can look the financiers can look the companies can look all the promises to the eye and say i don't care my eyes are lifted away from you if you want to help me help me you don't want to help me don't help me i'm actually not looking at you i'm looking at god and if he doesn't help me let help not come from anywhere if you can risk it that way then you can see god in a different fashion you will see god move for you in a way you never thought those who know their god they are strong they do exploits can i have an amen here yeah. hallelujah but Timius was serious church i want to beg you today it's the last day of 2017 please in year 2018 can god and all of us see some better measure of seriousness with god in this house can god get some better measure of seriousness with god in this house can we get out of the psychedelic religion can we get out of the convenience religion can we get out of all the complaint and excuses religion and for once do what get serious with god and say if he doesn't help me nobody else would that woman held on the on the dress of jesus and will not let him go she held on that dress she didn't care what people, people thought. 
She didn't care what people would say or were saying. She knew what she wanted. Her, her situation had been precarious for 12 years. Nobody has helped her. All her money had finished. Doctors had collected all that she had and she had no more money to go to the doctors. All she was left with was the day to die. But that day, therefore, she held on that garment and said, today is either this garment will change my situation or I will change my location. And when she held on that garment, she believed God with seriousness. She didn't care that people were pushing here and there. This one, I can't get to Jesus physically because of the crowd. But there's something of him that I've got. And I'm not going to let it go. And what happened? She had a change of status. She had a brand new beginning. Because the Bible says, immediately the, the, the flow of her blood what ceased it was a brand new day for that woman please I beg you let's get serious with God the reason many of us are where we are and have continued to be where we are is because we take the things of God lightly there is a record about Caleb that challenges me each time I read it scripture says that Caleb served the Lord wholeheartedly. By himself he knew it. When he came to ask Joshua for Hebron, he said I have served the Lord with the whole of my heart. And therefore I place a demand, give me what belongs to me. And Joshua had no option but to give him what belongs to him. Though it was 45 years since it was allocated to him. I pray today that God will cause you to become so serious that you will collect every heaven's allocation that has been lying down untapped, untaken, unused by your life that you will enter into your new grounds that have been waiting for you. And the reason you have stayed unable to take that thing is because you have not been serious with God. Get serious. But Timius was very serious. What is the third thing? The third thing that we see there is that when he got Jesus' attention and, 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 command, and, and Jesus commanded him to be brought to him, what did he do? He did another very important thing. He cast his old garments, which identified him with his predicament for many years. He cast that garment aside in preparation for what he was going to get. Bartimaeus looked and said, this garment is the garment everybody has known me with Every time they saw this garment, they didn't need to know who, who they didn't need to ask who is going there. They actually called my name. Even little children, when they saw this dress, they knew it was blind Bartimaeus. This title goes with me everywhere. And whenever I went, went anywhere, they just needed to see the dress and the title will follow. There goes blind Bartimaeus. And he said, today, because I want something new, I'm going to put off the old in order that I may take hold of the new. If a man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has to go and the new will come. If you are holding on to the old, I'm sorry, you are not ready for the new. If you are going to have a change of life, you need a complete departure from the old life. If you want a change of status, you will have to say goodbye to your former status. If you want a change of life and behavior, you have to begin to behave in a new way. You have to put away the old. The old has to go. Scripture says you don't take a, wine, a new wine and pour it into an old wine skin. If you do that, you said what? The wine skin will burst because it can't hold the new. Listen to me. The old cannot hold the new. It can't keep it. Therefore, Bartimaeus knew this secret. He said, this dress, you are going from today. You are not going to identify me anymore. By the time they open their eyes, they won't see me again. They won't know me again. They will not have this kind of identity that they've heard of me before. They won't identify me. They'll be looking for that man with a particular dress dress they wouldn't know that i have just passed them and i have passed them with a new status i passed them seeing i passed them and greeted them they did not even know it was i that was passing them because they were looking for a dress that identified me i want to say here to you that there is a dress you have worn from the day you were born up on 
until today that dress has limited you that dress has kept you in a particular place that dress has identified you as cannot and will not and cannot have and cannot be that dress has identified you and placed a, a limit on you that you can't go beyond this people have known it already they already can predict you they know what you are capable of doing but I came to say in 2018 you are going to do what eyes have never seen what ears have not heard because God is giving you a brand new beginning he's putting away your limitations that are your old dress he's putting away your old identity He's putting away your old failures. He's putting away your old weakness. He's putting away your shame. He's giving you gain because that's the new thing he has for you in the new year. You have lost many, 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 many times. But I see God coming in a new fashion to make you now begin to gain many, 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 many times. You have suffered pain and pain has become your identity. I heard scripture say that there will be a day heaven will take handkerchief, the divine handkerchief are already in the hands of God to wipe away the tears of 2017 on the bank of the river called 2017 across to 2018. There is a handkerchief in the hands of God. Sister, you have cried, you have wept. Your tears have almost become your food. I said today, God has decided that before you enter into the new year, he's come with a handkerchief to wipe away your tears so that the old can go and that you may step into a brand new beginning and be a new person rather than cry your song of joy will fill your mouth with your mouth you will testify and tell of the goodness of the lord and everybody will know that that's not the same person i used to know that you will pass some people they will not know it is you you will talk with some people they will not know it is you you will do business with some people they will not know it is you you'll be in the same class with some people they will not know it is you because the things that used to identify you you have broken company with them they are in your past and they don't know that a new thing has happened and then in this 2018 i hear the word say that you shall say come and see what the lord has done for me and men will testify the lord has done great things for him and for her and we are living witnesses i want to say the miracles of god in 2018 are not going to be things that you will tell with your mouth alone there will be testimonies other people will corroborate your story your story will be heard everywhere you will they will help you to tell the story i said they will help you to tell the story even when you don't want anybody to know about it they will go tell the other the other will tell the other the other will tell the other until what god has done in 2018 has become commonplace and everybody is talking about it why because it's not the former you it's a brand new you Can I have an amen in this house? Yeah. This night, when we cross into the new year, I don't want you to tell somebody, Happy New Year and stop there. Tell the person, Happy New Year and Happy New You. Yeah. Amen. Tell the person what? Happy New Year and what? Happy New You. Because something new will happen to you. I've asked God concerning this message that I, before I bring it to you, let heaven go to work. Let the angels be put on duty to begin working so that what we say in the word of, by the word of mouth shall be translated into physical things that you will contact. Then you will say, blessed is she who believes for there was what? A performance of the things that she had heard from the mouth of the Lord. As sure as heaven lives, as sure as God lives, if this is the word of God coming to you, this word will never return to him void, but it shall accomplish God's purpose in your own life, and you will be a brand new you. Yeah. Hallelujah. He put that garment away. I don't know what garment that has placed you where you are. If there is a garment of iniquity, garment of sin, you have enjoyed the pleasures of sin over and over and over again up until year 2017 31st of December you have enjoyed the pleasures of sin I came to tell you with that old wine skin you cannot access the new things that God wants to do for the word of God says no man who is born of God continues 
to sin. If a man is a sinner, he just needs to cry out to God. If there is anything Jesus came to do, he came to save them from their sins. So today, if you will give your heart to Jesus, he will break the yoke of sin and remove the limitation of sin and remove the identity of sin and remove the desire of sin and remove the passion for sin. He will remove the disobedience to the word of God. He will put in you a brand new yearning and thirst for God so that you will thirst after righteousness so that your life indeed can be blessed. Bible says blessed are they who thirst after righteousness. Yes, they are blessed. I want you to know that this is what God will do. Therefore today, before you cross over into the new year, please put away the garment of that iniquity. I don't have time to start calling iniquity one by one by one. You know it. You know the one that easily besets you. You know the troubles that you bear. You know the struggles you've been having. I came to say to you here that he came that he may set the captives free. Praise God. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Help, help me tell your neighbor, I want a new me. Amen. Just tell the person again, I want a new me. But Timios wanted a new him. And you see how he took it. Very seriously. He said, this garment, you can't follow me to where I'm going. I'm going somewhere. And you don't qualify to follow me there. If you follow me to that place, you give me a bad name. If you follow me to that place, you will drag me behind. I'm putting you down so I can move forward. Please check in your life. If there is something you must separate away, separate from today, please don't be apologetic about it. Do what? Go ahead and tear away from it. You will not die. And if you die, bless that day who sleep in the Lord, for they shall rest from all their labors. So if you die, you have not lost. Instead, what have you gotten? You've gotten a gain. So, tear yourself away from that thing. I don't know how close it has been to you. Whether it's a, it's a tendency, tear yourself away from it. If it's an attitude that keeps you back, I want, I want you to do what? Tear yourself away from it. Some, it is a mindset. You've carried this mindset for too long and no wonder you have remained the way people know you. Immediately people see you, they already size you what you are going to do because of what? Your mindset has kept you doing that same thing for years. Today, you need to drop that mindset. Think about yourself in a different fashion. Think about yourself in a different light. When you do that, I can tell you the truth that you will become a new you. For as a man thinketh in his heart, as a man thinketh in his heart, if you think you are a failure because you have failed 10 times, I want to say to you here, you can fail 1,000 times, you are not a failure. When God created you, he didn't put a badge that called you failure failure. He knew that you were a success because you were the work of his hand. He looked at the work of his hand and said what? Well, everything is very good. Please stay good. If you have failed ten times I don't care. Go and ask people who have done great things. Go and ask the people that, that pro invented the aeroplane. How many times they tried and failed and tried and failed but are they a failure? No. You are still enjoying the aeroplane today. Ask the people that put together the iPad and, you, and you, the young man will tell you with how many times he may have tried and tried and tried and it didn't work. Listen, every time you try and it didn't work, you have just known another way that will not work. That's all. You have not failed. What has happened is that you have just gained knowledge. Now I know one other way that does not work. So you do what? You move forward. Paul said, I forget the things that are behind. I do what? I press. For the things that are lying ahead. Amen. Amen. He put those behind him. So put away tendencies. Put away inclinations. There are some of us that have an inclination. We are pulled every day towards that inclination. Paul cried out with that inclination one day. He said the things I hate to do are the things I find myself always wanting to do. Maybe you are here. And there are certain things that you hate to do. You know they are not right. But there is an inclination. There is a pull in the inside of you. Before you know it, you've done it again. I want to say here today, if you are going to enter into 
uh, the new year and you will enjoy the new beginning, you need to do what? You need to put that garment off you and wear a new one. Number four, on being told that Jesus was calling for him, he did not only cast his old garment aside, but he also jumped for his up, jumped to his feet. He jumped to his feet. I call that running. I also call it making haste. He jumped at it. He hurried to have it. Hurried to have it. Brothers and sisters, I want to call you that as the new year goes, please make haste to want to hear the word of God. I like you to be desperate to want more of God, more of his word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So be desperate for everything that brings you in contact with the word of God because what will change your situation is no other thing but the word of God because when he gives you his word, the word enters into you and catapults you to another level because heaven and earth will pass away but the word of God endures forever. So you, mo mo you must be hasty in wanting to hear the word of God. You may be you must be desperate in wanting to hear the word of God. You must be in a hurry. Don't be, don't, don't drag your feet. Don't drag your feet. Don't drag your feet when it comes to the issue of hearing the word of God. Because that's where the solution to whatever challenge you are, you are handling is lying. Be desperate, quick to hear the word of God. I heard him say that you should be slow to speak. But what? Quick to hear. David said, I was glad. Every time they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. When talking about hearing the, the talking about the, the house of the Lord, he was talking about what? The presence of God. And in the presence of God, what do you get? The word of God. I want us to move away from what we've been doing over the years. Ten, ten, a service that is due to finish at 10.30. That's, it is at 10 o'clock. You are strolling to church and gisting on the road. I'm buying Coca-Cola midway. And just as if nothing is happening. I stand here when I minister. 10 o'clock, I'm seeing brethren just strolling to church. 10. In other words, they're actually just coming to mark register. Just mark register. Did you go to church? I went to church. No wonder we are still at the same place where we have been. Why? Because we are never, never, never in a hurry to hear the word of God. I heard scripture say that Jesus came and looked up where Zacchaeus was sitting, was standing or sitting up the tree. And what did Jesus Christ say to him? He said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. Make haste and come down. He said, come now. Come down quickly. For today, I must dwell in your house. And you know very well that before he got to his house, when, Bazaar, when Zacchaeus came down, the first thing was what? To engage him with the word of God. And no wonder, his whole life got challenged and transformed. He said, if there is anyone I have stolen for, from, I'm giving that person back four times. Let's be, in a, let's, let's be in a hurry to hear the word of God. Spend your last couple to buy tapes. To listen to the word of God. Spend your last couple to buy books and godly materials that will bring into your heart and to your spirit the word of God. Spend your money to attend conferences where the word of God can be brought to you live. Put priority on the word of God and your connection to the word. Because I tell you, the secret of your prosperity, the secret of your healing, the secret of your blessing, the secret of your uprising and uplifting, the secret of your breakthrough is in no other but the word of God. I saw a centurion say to Jesus, speak the word and my servant will be well. He knew that much. I wanted to be in a hurry to hear the word of God. He had to hurry. Zacchaeus jumped. Do you jump at the word of God? You know it was, what did, what did they come to tell him? They said the master calls for you. That's the word. What they brought to Zacchaeus was what? The word of the master. And in response to the word of the master, what did Zacchaeus do? He jumped. 
How many of you are jumping at the word? How many of you are jumping at the word? Young ones, how many of you jump when mommy knocks at the door? It's time to have family altar. How many young ones? So, oh, mommy, you have come again. Please, let's sleep a little more now. We can do it by 9.30. I slept late. And you slept late. Yes, I know you slept late. But what were you doing to, that made you to sleep late? You were watching Chelsea till 4 a.m. You wanted to see the la until the last whistle is blown. That's what kept you late. And in the morning, mommy is saying, come, let's face heaven. You say, oh, they can't jump at it. If a man knows that his destiny is in the word of God, is in what God says, he will jump at it. Zacchaeus jumped. I'm looking for jumping believers. Jump us at the word of God. To grab it, to hold it, to run with it. To put it in their hearts. To live with it and to obey it. That's the jumper God is looking for. And I can tell you, those who are that have that attitude, they cannot be where people used to know them. Go and check the scriptures. People were asking, is that not that blind man? In other words, he had changed location. People will get to know you and begin to wonder, is it not you? The more they see, the less they understand. Because the word of God has thrown you to a new place. I'm believing, for, believing God for a new place for every one of us that is seated here. But if you are going to assume a new place, you must do what? Jump at the word. Hallelujah. Jump at the word. Lastly, be expectant. Those are part of your preparation. Be what? Be expectant. Be expectant. Do you come to church just to see friends and have fun or just because it is what Christians do on Sundays? Is there an expectation when you come before Jesus? As you came to this service today, was there an expectation? Is there anything you are looking out for? That man was expectant. And you know what? He was not expecting money. He was expecting something much more than money. Because Jesus asked him, what would you want me to do for you? In other words, what are you expecting from this shout? You have been shouting all day. What, have you, what are you expecting? The man was clear and definite. He never means words at all. He said, Jesus, I want to receive my sight. He knew what he wanted. He knew what he was expecting. Every one of us that is sitting here, we don't have the same expectation. We don't have the same expectation. But everything, everyone must have what? Some expectation. And I can tell you that the word of God says, the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. Your expectation, your godly expectation will never be cut short. What you are expecting God to do in 2018, may the Lord do it in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your amen can be better than that. Yeah. Everything you are believing God for, you are expecting. Please keep expecting. And expectation is what? For me, expectation is keeping hope alive. When it is January, and January is ending, keep that hope alive. In February, March, April, May, June, keep that expectation fresh and new. Just keep saying, he will yet do it. In August, keep saying, he will yet do it. In September, some people are saying, uh -uh, are you still waiting? Me, since February, look at the lineup of miracles. Say, don't worry. Those who love last, love best. My own is coming. Why? I'm waiting. Because a thousand years before men are just like a day before him. Therefore, I'm not going to allow what has happened to you to spoil my expectation. In fact, what has happened to you is a great blessing for me because it tells me that because he has come to your house the next house he may be coming is my address. Amen. So I'm going to hold on to my expectation. 
In October, I will still be holding on to my expectation. In November, I will hold on to my expectation. 15th of December, 2018, I'll still be holding on to him. Why? Those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will walk and not be with it. They will not, they will not, be, they will not be tired. I'll still hold on to him. Job said, even if he crushes me yet, I will love him. He said, I will wait until my change comes. Your change came in January. The other person's change came in, in, Feb, in, in, in April. If I get my on 31st of December 2018, has he proved himself yes or no? Yes. He's Alpha. He's Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's not limited by time. Whatever he says he will do, he will do it. Expect God and don't give up. Circumstances will look as if this can't work. Forget about circumstances. God is not subject to your circumstances. Circumstances are in this world. But God is not a man. He's not limited by circumstances. Situations may be speaking the contrary. The way you feel in your body, you will not think that this sickness can be healed. Hold on to the Lord. He can do all things. And he will do what he says he will do. Do you want a new thing? Can somebody say, oh Lord, do a new thing. In 2018, do a new thing with my life. I want you to, 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 to tell the Lord this, this, this morning, oh Lord, in 2018, do a new thing with my life. Let's stand together. Let's stand together. Please join me. Let's, let's pray like Bartimaeus. He was very desperate. He was very serious because he really wanted something new. He was tired of the old. He was tired of the old style. Tired of the old sport. Tired of the old location. Tired of the old garment. He was tired of everything. He was tired like everyone, like a Yoruba person would say. He ought to, ought to sue me. He was tired of everything. He said, I need a change. There must be something you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you, there's still more in God. There's still more. There's still more. Can somebody say, oh God, do a new thing in my, with my life in the year 2018. Go ahead. Pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Can somebody talk to the Lord? Go ahead and pray. Ask God, do a new thing with my life. Oh my God. Are you in this house? Are you in this house? Uh -uh. Are you in this house? You think what you have is, is good enough? Your ministry, you think you are, is good enough? It's not good enough at all. Me, I cry every day. I look, I look at what's happening in New Estate. When I look at it, it causes me to cry. I say, God, I know that there can be more. I know there is still more. I can't touch it. I can't feel it. I cannot tell where it is, but I know that I know that there is still more. God, I want more. I want more. You speak in tongues, so what? There is still more in God. You have some naira and some kobo in your account. There is still more in God. You have built houses, one in Patakot, one in Surulere, one in Abuja. There is still more in God. You have clothes, you are dashing out. There is still more in God. You are born again. You, are, you have read the Bible page to page, cover to cover for, for ten times. There is still more in God. God is a fountain of water. Bible says out of your belly, God wants rivers of living water to flow because there is still more in God. Can somebody say, God, do a new thing with me? In the year 2018, do a new thing with me. Do a new thing with my business. Do a new thing with my health. Do a new thing with my marriage. Do a new thing with my home. Do a new thing with my life. Do a new thing in my, in my, in my job. Lord, in my work with you, do a new thing. In my academics, I have been maintaining a GP of 3.5, 3.8. Lord, can you do a new thing? I want to enter into four in the next semester. Can somebody cry and say, God, do something new with me. Do 
something new with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for spending these few minutes listening to the Word of God. We pray that His grace and glory will always be with you. Have a lovely week and see you next time.